The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. The title of my message today is Look Up a Little Higher. Look Up a Little Higher. I'll teach you how to lift up your head this morning. It's exciting after Thanksgiving. You know, maybe next year I'll, I'll preach a message, what happens after Thanksgiving. Uh, but we, we preached on Thanksgiving last week, and we said that uh, one out of the ten came back to thank Jesus for the healing, for the change that took place in his body. One out of ten. And uh, I'm glad to see many out of many that showed up to church today. So aren't you excited? Amen. Amen. God is good. Look up a little higher. First Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Uh, uh, we have the scripture. I'm not going to read all of it, or I may not even read it. Uh, just tell you the story. You're probably familiar with it. Uh, you can show it. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 11. Uh, the Philistines and Israel were across from each other, and there was a valley in between. And uh, every day, this uh, giant man was showing up and uh, defying the armies of Israel in Saul. And all of the people with him, all the soldiers with him, were shaken in their boots. They were scared. They were afraid. Is this a quality of a Christian? Are we supposed to be afraid because there's a giant out there or what looks like or what seems like a giant? Hmm. Should we be afraid? God did not give us the spirit of fear but a power and, and, you know, when you think about power, that means you have power. That means you have the victory. So there is no reason to fear. Okay. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Now, as you're not going crazy, you have a sound mind. Tell somebody next to you, I have a sound mind. And it sounds good when it thinks. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Saul was afraid. That's King Saul. And all of Israel with him, they were all dismayed and they were fearful. Psalm 120, verse 1, 121, verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help. I'm going to lift up my eyes higher. I'm going to lift up my eyes. For God's answer. I'm going to pray and I'm going to lift up my eyes expecting to receive. Expectation. Scott talked about it on Friday. Do you come to expect, expecting to receive from God? Is God the God of truth? Is God the God of power? Is God... The one who performs miracles, do we believe God or are we going to give up on God? I'm going to look up. I'm not going to look down. Elijah sent his servant while he was on his knees praying. He said, I want you to go and check and come back. The servant came back. He says, I see nothing. And so Elijah said, go back and forth seven more times. 
So the servant goes basically eight times. That's, that's the number of the new beginning. He goes one time before, and then when his master sends him back, he says, go back and forth seven times. And the seventh time, he's looking up. He's not looking down. Because if you look down, you will see no hope. If you look down, you're going south. It's not good. But if you look up, the Lord is going to visit you. The Lord is going to bring the answer. The Lord is going to perform a miracle for you. So uh, I haven't seen any miracles. Well, you don't have to see the miracles. All you have to know is a miracle worker. And he's in our midst today. And I want to believe the miracle worker. I'm not going to be discouraged because somebody died. I'm not going to be discouraged because somebody got sick. I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord and rise up in the power and the strength of the Holy Ghost. Glory. Glory. I'm ready to go in the power of the Spirit. Are you with me? Are you ready to go? Praise God. We're not here to give up. Oh, we've made mistakes. We blundered and, and fell in the past. But I tell you what, it's time to rise up with the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost. He's given us Holy Ghost power to rise up, to see a miracle take place in our lives. And so the servant goes and he looks up. And my encouragement today is look up. Don't look down. Look up. Because you are, you're going to see a sign. You're going to see the cloud, the, si the size of a man's hand. You are going to see a sign for the healing power, for the miracle power of God. You're going to see a sign in the heavenlies. It's going to come from heaven. It's from God. I'm not talking about the sun and the moon and all of that. That's not, these are not the signs, folks. The sign is God. God is waiting. He is in the heavenlies, and he is going to visit his people, especially in the last days. Because in the, in, in the last days, God said that he is going to visit the church, and the power of God is going to far exceed the, let, the latter rain is going to far exceed the former rain. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a rain coming. The cloud. I see the cloud the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, I hear the rain. You better hurry up and gird yourself up and, and get down to Jezreel. Hallelujah. The rain is coming. The power of God is moving. He hasn't stopped moving. He hasn't stopped performing miracles and signs and wonders. He's a God of miracles. Look up. Don't look down. One of our problems as human beings, is that we operate within the realm of the five senses. Taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing. Five senses. I mean, it's good to have the five senses so that you will be able to cross the street and be careful of the cars. It's, it's good to have the five senses so that you will discern your way around the house and not bump into the refrigerator all the time. But 
I mean, the way people feel is if we can't taste it, touch it, see it, then it's really not there for us. If I see it, I believe it. No, no, no. That's not the way it goes with a Christian. Not with believers. We're called believers because we're supposed to believe. I thought that's what it meant. Doesn't it? It's for this reason that we have so much trouble trusting God simply because we cannot perceive him with our five senses. Don't kid yourself. The five senses are not going to reveal God to you. You're not going to see him with your physical eyes. Hello? Uh, you're not going to feel him. Some, fo- some folks get, get by, uh, going by feelings and they make a lot of mistakes. And, and I'm not against feeling, but I tell you what, it's by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. There's a place for feeling now, don't get me wrong. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, No one has seen God at any time. So the first problem we have is that we cannot see God because... If we could see him, we would have no problem trusting him, I think. If you could see God, you, you know, you'd be sure that, you know, you really believe him because now you see him as he is. But I got news for you. It's, you're not going to see him until you get up there. Then you will see him as he is. Right now we see him partly in, in, in a glass, darkly. We have an idea, but not a total way of seeing him. That's why when Jesus came, he didn't come at the time of photography going wild. Now we have drawings of Jesus. He looks like an Englishman with blue eyes. Folks, that's not Jesus. Even Revelation describes Jesus, and it says that his eyes are fire. His hair is white as wool. Sorry to say, his hair is as white as wool. If you're going to, you know, draw a picture of Jesus, he has white hair. Amen? Amen? Somebody else is hollering hallelujah here. (laughs) I mean, I wish people would obey the scripture that says not to make an image of God. And the reason he, he came at the time, no photography, is so that people will not be going around worshiping the picture. Pastor, you mean I can't have a picture of Jesus in my uh, living room? Well, I mean, if it's that, if it's Jesus, you can have it. But it's not. <laughs> and he made sure nobody knows how to draw him. Amen. I mean, when you ask somebody who went to heaven and came back and they said, what does Jesus look like? Well, you know, nobody could describe him enough so that we have a, an artist that can draw his picture. It's not been around. So the second problem is that 
we can see our problems. We can't see Jesus. We can't see God. Because Jesus and God are the same, by the way. Hello? Same person. One God. Father of all. And above all. <laughs> God manifests himself in three different manifestations. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the same God. In case you want to know what we believe. So we see our problems. That's another problem. We see our problems. They assault our five senses on a regular basis. We can see them, touch them. They become so real to us, our problems. They occupy our horizon, invade our serenity, dominate our thoughts, and plunder our peace of mind, our problems. They are ever before us, in our face. They greet us in the morning. Hello, I'm here. You see me? They're looking up at us, and we're looking down at them. Which we shouldn't be looking down, we should be looking up. They greet us every morning, day after day, belittling us. At times, they make us shake in our boots, reminding us that we are not in control. We stop with our focus on the problems and we forget that behind our problems there is a God who is greater than any problem we face. Are you with me? Bigger than any mountain we have to climb. Stronger than any enemy that may come against us. That's the God we worship. That's why we have a God. That's why we come to worship him because we have problems that we can't handle and he is a problem solver. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we need to believe him. We need to be believing believers. Well, I'm a Christian. Hello, I'm a Christian. Well, are you a believer? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in his word? Do you believe in his promises? Are you excited today? You're going you're gonna to go out of here saying, I'm a believer and I believe in God, and I believe in his word, and I'm, gonna, I, I'm not going to accept and looking at the problems and dwelling on the problems. My focus is not going to be on the problems. My focus is going to be above. I'm going to lift up my eyes onto the hills, and I'm going to look unto God, the author and the finisher of my faith. So let's start looking at the problem solver instead of at the problems. Raise your eyes a little higher. Get your eyes out of the valley and look to the hills. Goliath had been breathing threats against God's people for 40 years. King Saul 
and the rest of the people focused on the giant for 40 days. Their focus was on the problem. You know something? I got something really good to tell you. David never called Goliath a giant. Everybody else called him a giant, but David didn't see him as a giant. He was 17, was filled with the Spirit. His focus was on God. So let us also be filled with the Spirit and let our focus be on God. Let us look a little higher. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain. He looked up, you see, to the mountain. And and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all round about Elisha. Look a little bit higher. Glory. I want to look higher. If you stop looking higher, you may not see the chariots of fire round about the mountain. Peter was walking on the water towards Jesus with his eyes fixed on Jesus. When he looked down at the waves, he began to sink. The people in the wilderness, after being bitten by serpents, were healed when they looked up at the brazen serpent. They looked up, didn't look down. Ten of the twelve spies saw the giants. The two saw the word, they saw God, and that is what diminished the enemy before them. The two spies, there was 12 of them, two saw the word, 10 saw the giants. Which way you want to go? Do you want to believe? Do you want to be like the two? Caleb and Joshua, who made it into the promised land. They saw victory. They entered in with the rest of the new generation. They were the old generation, but they made it in. You can be old, but you're going to make it in. You can be old, but you don't have to be decrepit. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to accept sickness and disease. You don't have to accept lack of strength. You can believe God and declare the word of God over your life and see victory in your life. Glory. Renewing our strength. God will renew our strength as we wait upon him. They that wait upon the Lord shall Renew their strength. It's time to be excited in the Lord. It's time to arise. It's time to look up. It's time to stop looking and dwelling on the problems. It's time to dwell on Jesus. Let's make our focus upon him. 
and let's get our strength from him. Somebody says, well, you're losing it. Uh, things are not working out. You've been praying and praying and praying and nothing is happening. I'll tell you what, today is a new day. Would you stand with me? Today is a new day, and we're going to, we're going to enter in and believe God like never before. We're going to trust him like never before. We're going to keep declaring the word of God like never before. Hallelujah. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. My eyes have seen what the word of God says. The word of God declares you are healed. Your body tells you you're sick. Which one are you going to believe? The doctor's report says you are in trouble. But God's word says you were healed 2,000 years ago. By whose stripes you were healed? What are you going to do? Are you going to declare the word of God? Or are you going to declare what the doctor said? Thank God the doctor is not here today. I can talk like that. I have to be careful around my children, too. <laughs> but no matter what the report says, if it's not what the report of the Lord is, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Peter comes and says, looking back at the cross, and he says, by his stripes we were healed. I found out I shouldn't be going around saying I'm getting old. My dad was visiting us here uh, some years ago, and, and he was about 75 years old when he came to visit, and I'd call him, and he'd turn his whole body around like to answer me. I say, Dad, what's, what's happening with you? He says, I don't know. I'm getting old. I said, wait a minute. You're a preacher. I said, you're a preacher of preachers. You can't talk like that. I said, you, God will renew your youth like the eagle. I said, what you got to do is declare the word of God. Speak the word of God. So I said, you walk in my living room back and forth and, and to the kitchen and all the rooms and, and declare that I am getting younger. I'm not getting older. Well, he did it. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome. Fridays at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.